You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Hey guys, this is the Catholic Family Podcast, and this is not Kevin Davis. Um, Kevin asked us if we uh, would like to come on and just talk through finances. I think Kevin's busy, and I don't know if he um, was wanting to be on or not. He didn't know if it would add a lot of value or not. So we, we, uh, he asked Ben and myself if we could come on and just uh, talk through anything specific in the financial world. Um, he's had me on a couple times. He's had Ben on at least once and i um, super grateful to be here. Um, obviously, we, we're both Catholic ourselves, and we have a soft spot to help all Catholics, especially Catholics that are eager to learn and better themselves in the finances. So yeah, today we're going to come on and talk through some basics of finances, how to make some financial decisions, what we teach people in our practice. Uh, Maybe towards the end, I'll give a little teaser of some advanced strategies and some details with investing and, and Really try to spark your guys' interest, your curiosity, reach out for questions. We're going to give away a course at the end that we've created that's actually being creative, but um, anybody who comments or asks for it through Kevin's podcast here, we will just send it to you guys um, for free, and hopefully it will be of some value. But um, yeah, let's kick her over. My name's Dan Kramer, if I didn't say that yet, and I'm up in Minnesota here, and uh, Ben Lands guards down in Omaha. So Ben, what do you think of today? What what are you excited to share with Kevin's following here? Yeah, so yeah, Ben Landsgard, I uh yeah, down here in Omaha. And uh I believe Kevin is I believe Kevin's in Padua today, or maybe that was yesterday, uh visiting the the um Basilica of St. Anthony. So hmm. kind of jealous, and that's one of the reasons he couldn't be here today, but uh that's all right. He's seeing cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, for me, you know, just excited to, to share some of these, you know, I, I talked to Dan about, you know, what, what should we talk about today? And we just kind of thought about, you know, what are a lot of questions we get from people, you know, when we take them through the process, especially at the beginning. So I think a lot of this will, will maybe help with, you know, you know, what, what, sh- what should we be saving? Um, you know, just, just a few basic questions and also give a little bit of an overview of, um, you know, our, our process and, you know, we won't go into a lot of detail, but, um, you know, just excited to give a little, little bit of guidance there. Yeah. You, you use the word process a couple of times now. Um, I'm just going to give a little back background, right. When I came into finances about six, seven, maybe eight years ago now, um, didn't really know much, you know, grew up in a normal, very, you know, good family up in uh, Wisconsin. And, um, but we didn't, we weren't really taught anything about finances. And, and when I got into the industry, it was very transaction based. It was, you know, sit down and what do you need? You know, thinking people actually know what they need. Right. And we're asking these very vague questions and, And what we found, what I found when I got connected with this group um, that started teaching a process is clients, you know, and people, they they do the best they can with the information they have, right? I don't think anybody wakes up in the morning and says, hey, I'm pretty excited to make a bad decision today, right? It's just, unfortunately, right, we go through life and we make decisions, especially in finances, but just, you know, in any area, we make decisions one at a time at different times with different people and under different circumstances, right? So Ben, you've heard me talk about this quite a bit. What is that, what does that lead to in the financial world for people? What do we call that? Well, it, it leads to what we call the the financial junk drawer, because I mean, everyone, at least everyone that I know has that drawer in the kitchen that you know, you've got flashlights, you've got pens, you've got paper, you've got paper clips, you've got batteries, you've got 10 different phone chargers in there, you know, but if you're looking for something in particular, it takes you forever to find it because, you know, you can barely get the drawer open and you're just digging around. So it can kind of lead to that in your finances when, 
you know, you, you know, it might be your first house you, you bought, you know, you know, how you set up your loan or how you set up your, your insurance on that home. Initially, you would have talked to a real estate agent, a mortgage lender and a, and a, you know, an insurance agent. So there's three different people, you know, that you're, you're making decisions with just right there. And then later on in life, you could be doing the same thing. And there could also be other people's opinions that, you know, you respect a lot. And so you get those opinions and, you know, you take those into account as well. And so it just leads to that, that financial junk drawer. Yeah. And, and the question is how, how do you make financial decisions? We're not here today to tell you you're making them all wrong. I mean, you know, hopefully you made some good ones. Um, hopefully you, you minimize the bad ones, you know, but what if there was a way, right? What if there was a tool? What if there was a process that helped you have confidence with your financial decisions, right? So about a year and a half, two years into the industry, it was probably 2017 at the time. And I was like, I was kind of getting fed up with the traditional financial world. And what I mean by that is like, you know, if you've ever sat down with those, you know, financial advisors and, and they sit down and they tell you they're going to look at all, you know, the whole picture. But then at the end of the day, they're like, hey, how much money you got left over? Let's set up this retirement account. And that's really it. And, you know, hopefully that works out for you. But at the end of the day, you don't really know what you're investing in. You don't know what this thing called a 401k or an IRA or a Roth or a 529. You, you don't know kind of the back end, how you're going to get that money out. And, and I'm not saying those things are bad in themselves, right? Those are one piece of the puzzle that we still help clients with. Um, but that's typically the bulk of people's financial training, right? Try to save a little extra, put it in this account and really just hope that it grows to something someday. You don't really have a game plan of how to access it. You don't know how it's going to treat you later. You're not really set up if something bad happens along the way. So we kind of peeled back the layers I got with this group and it, it walks clients through a process, right? And we'll get to that. That's going to be part two. So the course that I'm creating with Ben and, and my team up here is it's a three-part course. We're going to give away part one today and I'm going to walk you through each of the parts, but part two is once we get that made, we'll give you that too as well, but that'll probably be in the next few weeks here. We'll be recording that. Um, that's going to be, how do we make these decisions? How do we help people learn the principles of finances so they can make those decisions? Um, and then part three, part three is more advanced strategies. Maybe you've, you've done well, you, you, you got some higher income, maybe you got tax problems. Now you're, you're, you're paying a lot of taxes. You're looking for alternative investments to, to, for cash flow and investing and all that stuff. So we'll, that'll be part three. We're going to do an overview of that. But Ben, let's let's pull it back to part one. I'm going to walk through the four or five videos you're going to get in this course, and then let's kind of break it down. So part one, the course that I'm creating that I will literally give to you if you ask for it is, you know, there's going to be an introduction of the course. That's one video. It's five short videos. So it's not it's nothing crazy. Um, the second video is all on mindset. All right. What is the mindset that you might want to adapt if you want to build wealth, if you want to, you know, get ahead for, for yourself, your family, for your church, for your community. What is the mindset that maybe we can help you think a little different today? The second video is savings. Why is savings important? What are the goals with savings? What should we be doing with that money? We'll talk about that. Step three is debt, right? Is all debt bad? You know, what is the mindset with debt? How do we use debt? We'll talk some generic ideas. More so, what's the mindset that you might want to adapt when it comes to debt? We're not going to, I'm not here to tell you about specific debts. Don't go mortgaging your house after this one video or anything. Just hear, hear us out and, and just be open minded if you're listening to this, right? And step four is what are some action steps you can take? And really, what could you start doing to get prepared for, for the section two of the course, right? So that when you, when, and if you meet with us or somebody that teaches the process we teach, right? There's lots of us throughout the world. Um, obviously if you're a Catholic and, you know, 
work with us. We, you know, we're in 30 some states um, and uh, we'd be happy to at least have a conversation, right? We don't charge for our services. Um, ben, I know everybody goes, what, right? We'll make money when we take people through the process and when they implement action steps that require certain products or companies, right? Right. Maybe we can help right. with the, your investments or your insurance or your debt management or whatever. And we need to use certain companies to make that happen. We'll get paid by those companies. We do not charge you to talk with us. So don't be afraid to reach out. Happy to help, obviously, like we said. So Ben, let's let's peel it back, right? Mindset. Maybe just give some personal things you're working through or that you've noticed over the last year with your mindset when it just comes to finances and wealth building. Yeah. So I, I used to, you know, when it, when it comes to, to mindset, it's kind of funny. It's one of those buzzwords you hear a lot, uh, a lot more recently, but it's, you know, when I always thought about money, it, it was, you know, always came to, okay, what, you know, what do I have going in? What are my expenses? What do I need to cut back on? You know, because I'm, because I'm overspending all the time or, uh, you know, just, just so that I, I, so that I'm not overspending. And, you know, one, one thing that I've really been, been working on through, you know, listening to different podcasts, reading different, different books is, you know, not so much focusing on cutting everything back. Obviously, as Catholics, we don't want to become worldly chasing after all of these material things. You know, that's not good. And and that's not what I'm suggesting. But instead of always cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, it was how can I instead add more, add more value, add more revenue to my life, you know, to be able to do more. Um, you know, I think, you know, as, as Catholics, when we have more, I think we, we do more good things with it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. are able to tithe more, help, help people out that, that may need help. Um, you know, just a, a big thing for us is, is health, you know, just making sure, you know, that we're eating healthy and, and that, you know, that's just a, a added cost. It's, it's hard to, harder to find good, healthy food. So it's not, not like I need to go out and make a ton of money so I can go buy the fanciest new car. It's, you know, it's just to, to have a, a better impact on your family, on your church and on your community. Um, you know, so it just getting ideas and just rewiring like, okay, what can I do to, to be more valuable to people? Yeah. Yeah. And how about the big, um, like the mindset, like if, if you're a Catholic and maybe you've heard this before, or even any Christian, we, we get this a lot, like money is the root of all evil. Have you ever heard somebody misquote the Bible and say that? I, I hear people say it all the time. And I've, I've heard people say that, you know, they, you know, they, they aren't fans of, of wealthy people or, uh, you know, they think they're stuck up or think they're not very nice or that they don't know any wealthy people who are good people. And um, I, I'm not sure who, who those people are, are talking to or talking about, because I, I know lots of uh, wealthy people that do some really, really amazing things um, with their wealth. And, you know, I, I think the love of money is the root of all evil. I, I don't really know all of the, all of the quotes to, um, you know, in scripture about that, but I, I do know one was explained to me by a priest and, um, that one was, uh, you know, it is, it's harder for a rich man to pass through, um, or I should say it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven is one that I hear a lot. I almost messed that up, but, <laughs> uh, a priest explained to me that back during the time of our Lord, there, there were around the cities, they, they were called eyes of a needle. 
They were like doorways. And to get through them, uh, the camels had to get down on their knees and like crawl, you know, just shimmy their way through these holes. And so it was really, you know, it was difficult to get them through, but, you know, they got through. And so that put a lot of, a lot of context to that, you know, to that quote for me. Uh, is just realizing that, oh, it's, he wasn't literally talking about, you know, a needle with a hole, you know, that's you know, teeny tiny. So, you know, for, for those people who are, you know, maybe have that mindset, maybe, maybe talk to, talk to the priests about it, or, um, you know, even just open your mind a little bit more to, you know, what, what could you do? What kind of a good impact could you have? you know, mm -hmm. if, if you were wealthy. Yeah. And both of those quotes are, are great quotes. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. We, we shouldn't love money. We shouldn't love really, we shouldn't be attached to anything material. We know that. Right. And it, and it, and maybe the second one you said, you know, the camel, it, it's hard for the rich man to get to heaven. Like when I even hear that, I go, Oh, maybe, maybe we shouldn't try to be rich. Right. So I, I think whatever you're working through and I don't have all the answers. I I'm, I'm just a person up here trying to figure it out too. Right. But whatever you're trying to work through, like try to dispel, try to get rid of the contradictions. Right. If you secretly are like, man, I want to figure this out. I want to provide for my family. I want to make more money. I I'm sick of sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? You, you're, you've had enough and you're ready to make a change, but you're still going, man, like if I get rich, I'm going to lose my soul. Like that's a contradiction, right? And it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to take your peace away, right? So there, I think to Ben's point, if you're going to go for wealth, to take care of your family and take care of your community and take care of your church. I'm in favor of that, but I'm not in favor of it at the expense of losing your soul. I'm such, I'm so much not in favor of it that I started this podcast called the 4F Forum to help make decisions, right? Want to get rid of the contradiction. If, if you think money is bad and it's going to make you evil, but yet you're trading 50 hours a week to get money, that's a contradiction, right? If you, if you think money is going to, if you get wealthy, it's going to lead you to hell, but yet you go and put money in the plate at church every, every week, that's a contradiction, right? So I would encourage you to, you know, overcome that objection, right? If you're going to go for it, go for it. I believe God made us in his image and that with God, all things are possible. We just have to keep ourselves close to God, right? I think you should tithe. I think you should be generous. I think you should be good stewards with your money, right? So let's let's move on because there's a lot more to cover. But the, the, the moral of that story is if you're having all of these objections, thinking money is bad, but you, you kind of want to do well in your money, there, you, you need to fix that contradiction. And I can't do it for you. I'm just hoping to help you there. So reach out if you have questions. So two, Ben, let's jump into saving. What have you learned over the past year of principles of just savings and why is saving important if if you're going to get ahead in your finances well i i learned a lot through mistakes in the past um just i i I'd never really made it a habit to to save you know until till recently till i started you know actually practicing the process you know that that we teach you know, so I mean, a year, and uh, you know, I pretty much just spent everything, and you know, and and I learned, you know, when when you do that, and when you're not, you know, creating the habit of saving, you know, you're you're not being disciplined with your money, you're not being a good steward of what God gave you, and uh, you know, when life happens, you have a fridge that goes down and uh you know a car that goes down you know i i in the past i've had to go go to the credit card you know and you know luckily i've never never had to to really get in deep in credit card debt but i've 
had to go there several times to, to get me through. And, um, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't a smart decision. Could have been, could have been a really bad, could have been a really bad thing. Um, but, you know, I think something I, I just wanted to mention too, is like saving is not fun and it's not hard. It, it's almost like eating healthy, you know, you know, it's good for you you know, you should do it, but we, we don't really like to do it. I mean, (laughs) we like to eat junk. So what, what I've kind of learned a little bit of, of, you know, to be successful in, in that area and to be successful a lot in life, you know, when you look at what a lot of these people have done is it's a lot of what the Catholic church teaches about mortifying ourselves, having, having discipline and denying ourselves so that ultimately we can reach our goals, you know, and uh, it's just really funny how saving is just, it it just fits as a, as a principle of finance for Catholics, because it's, it's us denying ourselves. Well, the one thing I heard that stuck out the most is saving kind of sucks. (laughs) I'm a spender. Um, I don't, I don't like that. So I'm going to talk a little bit of some mindset because this whole first course is on the mindset. So the mindset of saving is this, right? If you're making, you know, 60,000 a year, divide that by 12, that's 5,000 a month, right? A goal should be 15% saving, right? That, that should, I don't care if it's going into your 401k. I don't care if you're setting it aside in, in, in your checking, but really, Look at your numbers. If you're making less, more, whatever, if you're making a hundred grand between you and your spouse and right, you should be saving $15,000 a year set aside somewhere. If you're not, a lot of people are saving one, two, 3%. It's going to be hard. Why, why Ben, like real quick, quick answer, like one word answer. Why do we need to set some money aside to get ahead? Life happens. Yeah, life happens, but what happened really in the last two years with the cost of everything? Oh man, inflation. Dude, dude, like it, you have to set some money aside and I'll teach you in further courses what to do with that money. We don't want to leave it sit forever, right? Saving a ton and having a big old bank account might feel good, but you're not going to get ahead. You need to get that money working after a certain amount. We'll teach you all of that, but you need to start the habit of saving Set a target for 15%. The wealthiest people of the world increase their income, save even more, and they their average savings is 30 to 40% of their, their income. And maybe you're going, well, Dan, that's cool. They have money. No, they started with less money and they followed principles. You can do the same thing, right? The habit of saving. So second part of the mindset of saving I like to share is as soon as I see a little bit of money in our accounts, I like, I'm ready to go buy something. I don't care if I buy it and give it away, right? So I had to switch my mindset, get rid of this idea of saving for an emergency fund, right? Quit labeling it an emergency fund. And maybe you're going, "Mm, Dave Ramsey said, we can talk all day on that. Listen, if you save for something, guess what you get? You get that something. If you continuously save for emergencies, you're going to keep getting more emergencies, okay? So switch your savings, save for investing, save for something fun, save for that family trip. I don't care what it is, but save for, I had to do this and I'm not saying it worked perfect. It's a work in progress, but I get excited for buying the next rental property, but I can't do it if I don't have any money. I have to save for it, right? Um, Emergencies will happen. I'm not saying, you know, you can live in fantasy land and not plan. You but they hurt a lot less when you just write a check and move on. Right. And oh, to yeah. Ben's point, you, you, if you're a Catholic and you're going to pay your bills, you're going to figure out a way. So you either got to borrow money or put it on the credit card, which is borrowing money from like the worst people in the world. Right. So those are a couple mindsets, get your savings rate to 15% as fast as you can. Right. Build that savings up. Second, don't save for emergencies, start saving for investments, something bigger, right? Um, 
Step three, course three that you're going to get if you want it, debt. Debt. Ben, is all debt bad debt? And what are some mindset tips we can give these folks on debt? No, I, you know, when, when we talk to people about debt, it's, you know, there is bad debt, there is good debt and, you know, there, and we'll, I think you'll get into it in the course is, you know, there's also even better debt. So not all bad, not all debt is, is bad debt. And I don't know if how deep you want to get into that, but um, no, no, it's not all bad. Well, tell them, tell them, I mean, what well, are the it, principles of good debt, principles of bad debt? And then I like to share my secret. I think I, I think I made this, but better debt. I, so, yeah, I think you, I think you did make, <laughs> I think you did make that because I don't so think I've heard that. that nobody, <laughs> it's so unique. Nobody knows what it is. I'll, yeah. I'll share. No, well, the, so when you think of, when you think of bad debt, you know, you think of, you know, really high interest rate and a really short payback period. So, you know, credit cards are, you know, anywhere, I'm not even sure where exactly they are now, but anywhere from like 16 to 25% interest. And, you know, it's like a 30 day payback period most of the time. So that's not very good debt. You know, an example of, of good debt would be like your house, your house is a, it's a fixed interest rate. That's especially, I mean, rates are going up a little bit, but right now are, are very low and they've got that really long payback period, you know, 30 years. And so that payment never changes and you're building equity into something that most of the time is growing in value. And then Dan, why don't you, why don't you do better debt since that's, that's like your copyright. So so you hit on these, but I'm going to quickly summarize. So bad debt, think high interest rate, high payment, and no tax advantages, right? Good yeah. debt, flip those around. Low payment, low interest rate, tax advantages, right? So mortgages, you get to write off your mortgage interest. Usually a pretty low, you know, a thousand bucks can get you $250,000. Not bad, right? Um so if, if you know what to do with that 250,000, so you can go invest it somewhere else and make more than a thousand dollars, right? Which leads us to better debt. Better debt is borrowing somebody else's money and letting somebody else pay it off and you get to keep the asset, right? So, and you're going, if, you're, if your eyes are rolling back, think well, a rental property and before you jump in and say, yeah, but my uncle had a rental property and the tenant ruined the house. I get it. Okay. Right. There's, there's risk with everything, but I'm just saying if it goes smooth and you buy the house, you put a mortgage on it. Let's say you have to pay 600 bucks a month for that house. You put a tenant in there and they give you 1200 bucks a month. You get to keep the house at the end of the day. The mortgage company, right. Is paid off by the tenant. So, so better debt is somebody else pays it. So mindset of debt, like Ben said, if you're going around saying all debt is bad debt, I'm not saying it's wrong. It just might be the slow path to build wealth. If you read any finance book, what do the wealthy people say? OPM. You need to learn how to leverage and use properly other people's money, right? And that's really all it is, right? And maybe you're going, yeah, but the Bible says not to use debt. Show me. I'd love to hear it. You know, I, 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 in all sincerity, I'd love to hear it. I'm, I love Bible conversations about money. You know, I, I, I think God wants us to be good stewards, right? Is, and maybe you're listening and, and I'm being completely honest. If you, if you know something I don't, please share with us. If, if it's sinful and bad to use debt, I would love to know, right? I just don't, I just, I'm not sure if that's the case right? Um, is it sinful to borrow debts you have no intention to pay back? Yes, all that stuff, right? Um, so anyway, time-wise, we are about 30 minutes in. Let's talk about the action step. And we kind of covered these, but 
Um, ben, I want to talk to them, the importance of organizing, give them some simple stuff they can start rounding up. If they want to work with us or have a conversation, it's free. Like we said, you can send it to us. We can talk to you. We can help you out. But organizing and WCA, share um, share um, some, some tips that you can give them for that. Yeah. I mean, as far as, as far as organizing, you know, whenever we go through the process with someone and we'll, we start organizing everything, you start from the, start from the very top, you know, we'll look at, look at their, their income. There's, um, you know, all of insurance coverages from home and auto, um, you know, all of your, you know, your benefits package that you have through work. It'll have your medical, uh, have all of your like disability. Um, you know, we'll look through uh, wills and trusts, life insurance. Uh, the other, other thing is, you know, social security statements, you know, that, that comes into retirement. And also if you have, uh, if you have a, a family, you know, if you were, you know, if you're the main breadwinner and you pass away, you know, there might be a benefit from social security, um, look at different retirement accounts, um, you know, what kind of debts are, are there, um, you know, if there's business involved, you know, what, you know, look at taxes, uh, look at real estate, any, you know, anything that has to do with finances, you know, we'll, we'll get together and, and just get a really clear 30,000 foot view of where everything is. And then start to see, okay, where do we need to go from here? How do we, we test and verify that the decisions we're making are, are good? And then that the WCA account, we call that our, our wealth coordination account. And the wealth coordination account is just a separate checking account that's completely separate from, you know, your general, general checking and we use that for any money that, you know, gets, you know, say you have a debt that pays off and now you don't have a $200 a month payment anymore. Then we move that money that gets freed up to that WCA account so that instead of getting mixed in with, you know, your general checking where, you know, when money goes in there, it just disappears. Uh, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, we have that, have that separate account where it goes directly to and then, you know, we start to build that savings up and then we can go use that to go make improvements. So the WCA is a really, I mean, that's an easy action step for anybody really. Um, you know, and if you're like, ah, shoot, I don't, I don't know how much money I have available or, you know, just go through your cash flow. And if you're already saving money, save it to that WCA so that it's, you know, you don't see it. It's not, you know, it's just not there takes one more step for you to, to get to it. I love it. Um, so yeah, just for time's sake, I'm going to breeze through part two course and part three course real quick. So that's the summary of some of the part one course. We will send that to you if you want to listen to it a few times. Um, and there's action steps after each each and every um, video I send out, but part two principles of finance. This is after we sit down, you, you got your organized documents to us and we'll walk you through. There's four steps, whether you're making 50,000 a year or 500,000 a year, whether you got tax problems, whether you're paying a lot, paying none, doesn't matter. These four principles, I take every one of my clients through step one. We want to have the right protections. We want to have maximum coverages in all areas. And we don't really want to pay a lot of -of out-of-pocket expenses. In fact, one of our objectives in working with people is no out-of-pocket cost. Meaning if we incur an expense in an area, it's because we freed up or repositioned money from another area to make that happen. And obviously you can measure and see that it's helping your finances. Step two, where and what is the right amount to save that is specific to you? We'll teach you saving strategies to get more control of your savings and all that stuff. Um, Step three, debt. We'll take an in-depth look of all your debts. We'll teach you how to restructure debt. And this isn't a one and done deal. This is, you know, sometimes there's an action step you got to work on for a while and we'll meet again down the road. 
to implement the action, right? A lot of times people are overpaying the debt column unintentionally. And we show people how to restructure debt to free up cash flow. Buzzword, cash flow. If you don't know what it means, look it up. But essentially, it's your flow of money. We all have cash flow. Unfortunately, some people have a lot of cash flow going to places that aren't serving them well. We teach them how to be most efficient with their cash flow. And step four, assets. Everybody wants to learn how to invest and get rich, right? It's step four, right? The wealthiest people in the world, these are where these principles came from. They build the foundation of the first three steps and it allows them to do much more investing at a faster pace with less risk because of their positioning. So we that's part two. That is the course two. It talks about those four steps we take people through. And then lastly, part three is, is more for those advanced strategies. Maybe you're paying six figures, you know, into taxes, maybe less, maybe more. What are some ways we can start to recover those tax dollars, right? Investment overview. I'll, I'll go in depth on real estate, tax advantages, income, you know, why the wealthy, why 80% of millionaires own real estate? What's the ticket? No, we're not talking about your personal house, right? That is real estate, but that that is not the most effective way to build wealth with real estate. We'll talk about, you know, different avenues in real estate. We'll talk about crypto and 401k and invest, you know, investing in the stock market and just a general overview of investments and advanced strategies and tax mitigation ideas. So I think we should wrap up this. Uh, I hope this was helpful, Ben, if you're going to edit some of those blips out and we can make this work great. If we have to reshoot this, just let me know. But um, yeah, reach out if you have questions and, and Ben, I'll let you close us up here. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, and yeah, if like Dan said, if, if you guys want to, to get access to that course, uh, you know, we're just going to give that away for free. Uh, you can contact Kevin uh, or you can, you can reach out directly to us, whatever is easier for you. But uh, cool. Thanks for listening. And yeah, God bless. And we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Catholic Family Podcast. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends and family. You can support the production on Patreon and PayPal. And you can reach Kevin at kevin89davis at gmail.com. At Mayorum de Gloriam, all for the greater glory of God.